Okay, so we're going to have a look at a really nice way of proving this inequality, that 6x squared minus 4xy plus 9y squared is always greater than or equal to 0. And your most natural way of doing this might be using calculus to try and find a minimum point. But we're actually going to see a really nice method using linear algebra for this sort of problem. So hopefully you'll agree this is a really elegant solution to this problem. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'll show you what the trick is, and then we'll try and explain what's going on here. Basically, I'm going to write this as the product of a 2 by 2 matrix with two vectors, the x and y's. It turns out that when you multiply all of this out, so I'll do the multiplication here first, so we've got 6x minus 2y, and here we've got minus 2x plus 9y as our column vector, and then we've got x, y here. Then we multiply this out, you multiply all of these by x, all of these by y, and then we'll get back to our original expression that we want. And here I've split this up, so equally the minus 4 into minus 2 and minus 2. I'll sort of go into the details of why I've done that later on, but that's going to turn out to be important. But just to sort of verify, this expression is the same as our original expression here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to diagonalize this matrix as our next step. So I'll start by finding the eigenvalues. So we look for the determinant 6 minus lambda minus 2 minus 2 9 minus lambda. We want to find which values of lambda is this equal to 0. Then minus 4. So when we expand this, you get lambda squared minus 15 lambda, and then plus 54 minus 4, so plus 50. And then you can see this has a nice factorization, lambda minus 10, lambda minus 5. So our eigenvalues are, let's say lambda 1 is 10, and lambda 2 equals 5. So now we'll find the corresponding eigenvectors for these. So we'll start with the first eigenvalue, which is 10. So to find a corresponding eigenvector to this, we just need to solve the usual matrix equation, 6 minus 2 minus 2, 9. Multiply this by a vector, x, y. And this needs to be equal to 10 times the original vector, so 10x, 10y. And then we'll get two simultaneous equations here, 6x minus 2y equals 10x, and also minus 2x plus 9y equals 10y. And then when we solve these, we'll get y equals minus 2x. So we can have, for example, we could take our eigenvector to be 1 minus 2. But I actually want a unit eigenvector for the sake of what we're doing here. And we'll sort of go into the details of y later on. But if you look at the magnitude of this, it's the square root of 5. So I'm going to divide through by root 5. And I'm not going to rationalise the denominator just to try and keep it a little bit more compact. So we'll take this as our unit eigenvector for the eigenvalue 10. And then what we'll do next is the exact same thing for lambda 2, which is 5. So we solve the same matrix equation, but you've got a 5 in place of this 10, so this gives you your simultaneous equation 6x minus 2y equals 5x, and you also get minus 2x plus 9y equals 5y, and then when you solve these, you'll get x equals 2y, which tells you you could take, for example, 2, 1 as your eigenvector for this eigenvalue, but again I want a unit eigenvector, so we divide by the magnitude, which is root 5 again, we get 2 over root 5 and 1 over root 5 as our second eigenvector. So now we're ready to actually diagonalise this matrix. So now we've done all the work we need to do to actually diagonalise this matrix, and we say we call this original matrix A. What I'm going to do next is actually write it in the form P times by D times by P inverse, where 
This is our diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues on the leading diagonal. And then P is going to be the matrix using the corresponding eigenvectors as columns. So P, this is going to be 1 over root 5 for the first column, minus 2 over root 5. And the second column will be 2 over root 5, 1 over root 5. D, all we need to do here is just put in 10 and 5. And then we need to think a little bit more about what P inverse is. But this is quite nice for this example because the determinant of P, we can really easily check that that's just 1. So we just divide by 1, so nothing changes there. And we need to swap around these 1 over root 5s, but they're the same, so nothing changes there. And then finally, we make this negative and take the negative of this. So you get minus 2 over root 5. 2 over root 5 here. So very little changes here, and you may have noticed this is actually equal to P transpose. So this will turn out to be important later on. So now we're ready to, what I'll do is I'll write the original matrix A, the 6 minus 2, minus 2, 9, in this form that we've been aiming for. So we've got 1 over root 5, we put our P matrix here. and then multiplied by the diagonal matrix, and then finally multiplied by P inverse as well. And then what we'll do next is we'll actually have a look at this. What does this tell us in the context of the original problem, so trying to solve this inequality. So remember that we're trying to show that this expression here is always greater than or equal to zero. And we've written it using a matrix, and then we've written the matrix in this sort of expanded form. What we're going to do next is multiply these two together, multiply these two together, and then this will give us a nice new expression. So when you multiply by this first column, you'll get x minus 2y over root 5. And then multiplying by the second column, you'll get 2x plus y over root 5. So we'll leave the diagonal matrix alone just for now. And then for this next one, we need to multiply this row by x and y. So you'll get x minus 2y, put this in brackets, over root 5, like this. And then beneath this, you'll get a 2x plus y over root 5, just like this. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll multiply these two together, and then we'll multiply by this finally at the end. So again, this is quite nice, so you're 10 and 0, all you're going to get is basically this same thing where you multiply by 10 and this gets multiplied by 5. So I'll leave this first vector just as it was, 2x plus y over root 5, and then what we're multiplying by is 10x minus 2y over root 5, and we'll get 5 2x plus y over root 5, like this. Then we need to multiply these two together. So I hope you can see your x minus 2y over root 5 becomes squared now. So this is going to give us a really nice expression. So basically this is all equal to 10 times by x minus 2y over root 5, all squared plus 5, 2x, plus y, over root 5, all squared. And what we can do here is we've got the 2, 1 over root 5, so if you take out a factor of 1 over root 5 squared, so that's just taking out a factor of a fifth, this becomes really nice, you get 2x minus 2y, all squared, plus, so the 1 over 5 cancels with this, so you're just left with a 2x plus y, all squared. And clearly this is greater than or equal to zero because it's the sum of two squares of real numbers. So after all of that work with diagonalizing the matrix, seemingly out of nowhere we get this really satisfying expression, the sum of different things squared, that shows that this is greater than or equal to zero. 
So I'll have a go at briefly explaining just sort of where this kind of comes from, how we can apply this to similar problems in the future. And basically this relies on the fact that we've got what's called a quadratic form. So basically everything is of order two in a polynomial if you count x and y as contributing one each. And this means that you can always write this as a product of vectors and matrices. So you've got alpha, beta over two, beta over two, gamma. So just like we did at the start of this problem. And it's really important that I write it as a symmetric matrix where these two are equal to each other because then you can apply the spectral theorem, which basically tells you that any real symmetric matrix, you can diagonalize this using an orthonormal basis of eigenvectors. And what that's telling you is essentially you can always write your matrix A, define this as A, you can always write this as P D P inverse, where actually P inverse is equal to its transpose. So in less technical terms, basically it means that your P matrix, its inverse is its transpose when you diagonalize. So now we want to try and apply this. What does this tell us? Then, then you've got X, Y multiplied by what we'll call P matrix A, B, C, D, or you know that B is equal to C. You've got lambda 1, lambda 2, your eigenvalues. You've got A, C, B, D here. And this is all multiplied by X, Y. And then when you multiply this out, basically what you get is lambda 1, AX plus BY, all squared, plus lambda 2, CX plus DY, all squared. And of course, this depends on your eigenvalues have to both be positive in order for this to be greater than or equal to zero. If they're both negative, you can show that this is always less than or equal to zero. So even though it doesn't quite always work for every quadratic form, you can prove some inequalities using this sort of method. It's a really beautiful application of linear algebra. Hopefully you can agree that this is a really satisfying way of proving that this expression is all greater than or equal to zero without using calculus.